us welcome Marilyn Hickey. Thank you for sewing. You can be seated. Now, I want to promote my daughter, Sarah. She's the best. And I'm not prejudiced. So look at someone and say, honey, she's not prejudiced. It's just her daughter. But really, I tell her when she preaches, I say, that was just outstanding. But I'm going to take it and make it marvelous. So that's kind of a joke in our family. But trust me, she really will bless you tonight. So bring people, bring unsaved people, bring people that hate church, they'll love her. Okay? Let's join hands. Let's pray for the lost of this city. Father, we just thank you that people are wooed and drawn of the Spirit of God and this city is known as a place where Jesus is Lord of the whole city. Thank you, Father, that you use us to be evangelists, that wherever we go, we're encouraging people to know Jesus. God, that we have compassion and love for people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'm going to talk to you just for a moment about being led of the Spirit. Some years ago, the Lord dealt with me to call all my partners and pray for them. This was at the beginning of the year. And I said, God, that's not a good thing because I don't have time. And plus, I don't think that's a good thing anyway. Did you ever argue with God? Have you noticed he wins? And so I thought, well, I'm going to take California first. And so I'm getting ready to call these people. So I called this woman, and I said, uh, Denise, her name is Denise, this is Marilyn Hickey, and I, I just wanted to call you and tell you I really appreciate you being a partner, and what could I pray for you today? And she started crying. She said, are you really, Marilyn? I said, yes. She said, is this a recording? I said, no. I, this is Marilyn. She said, well, the reason I'm crying she said, and I'm so touched by it, she said, I have been very offended at God. She said, I had cancer in my face, and a third of my face was removed. So she said, they can't build it back up, and I don't like to go out because people stare at me. And so she just said, God, I don't think you care about me. I don't think you love me. If you really love me, have Marilyn Hickey call me today. Hmm. Now, that's not even the best part of this. So later, I went to uh, Dick Bernal's church, and she was there, only her face was filled in. Oh, wow. So God has such good things. So put your hand on your heart. Say, God has a miracle for me in this service. I want to share something that I think can happen to you. God has spare parts in heaven. So when I got married, they told me I had an enlarged heart. I could never be active. So I w we weren't in ministry. I was a school teacher. So my husband was invited to sing in a service, kind of a downtown place where they were feeding alcoholics. And so he got up to sing. And I felt something warm go over my heart. And I thought, I have a new heart. So on the way home, I said to him, I don't have an enlarged heart. I have a new heart, because they told me I could never be active. Now, you know, every time I have a checkup, they say, oh, you have the most wonderful heart. <laughs> now, why am I telling you that? Because God has spare parts in heaven. So I want you to stand up. What do you need that you don't have? God has it. Is that true? Did he say he'd supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory? You know, I'm 87 and a half doing more now than in my 20s. So don't tell me this doesn't work. So put your hand on your heart. Say, Father, I believe today you are supplying something in my body that I need. 
I thank you. My best days are ahead. And my worst are behind. Amen. Now wave goodbye. Goodbye to the bad days. Amen, amen, amen. The best are ahead. So you may be seated. Now, this probably is my favorite thing to do, to get to do this here. Because I like to get you hooked on the book. And Psalm 51, 6 says, Thou, God, desirest truth in the inward man, and in the hidden man you will make me to know wisdom. So, now you may want to hold up your phone, but where is truth? It's in your Bible. Okay, so hold your Bible up, or hold your phone up. Say, this is truth. This is truth. Now, where is God looking for it? He's looking for it in here. So he's not looking for it on your phone. That's nice. He's not looking for it on your Bible, big Bible in your living room. He's looking for truth here. Now, this is very important because truth here, he makes wisdom up here. So the more truth I put in here, the more wisdom he can put up here. So little truth, little wisdom. I didn't say stupid. Little wisdom. A lot of truth, a lot of wisdom. And so I always encourage everyone to read through the Bible every year. Because when you read the Bible, the Bible begins to read you. And I have all kinds of books and tapes and so on. But my favorite thing is seeing Jesus in every book of the Bible. Because as we behold him... We are changed into his image, and we go from glory to glory. Now, we're getting ready to go to Egypt, big Muslim country. We'll have big healing meetings there, and Egypt is wide open for the gospel. Do you think that's glorious for me at 87 and a half to go to Egypt and see thousands of people get healed and get saved? It is just awesome. So... I want you to lift your eyes up and say, I'm going to another level of glory. Amen. 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 So when God gave this to me, I had such a hunger to get people hooked on the book. And I think a lot of times people don't read the Old Testament because they say, oh, it's too hard. You know, and it's a lot of begats and so on and so on. I don't want to read the Old Testament. But when you read the New Testament, you're really reading old. Because most of the New Testament is quoted from the old, right? But don't you think you could see Jesus better if you read both? So look at someone and say, honey, it's good you're here this morning. You really need this. So we need to read it all. And we need to let God read us in it. So when I put this together, I think it's the most important thing I ever did. I have 150 books, but this is the best. Why? Because this is not just a book you read. This is a, a resource book. You'll use it all your life. And when you buy one for another person, you can get them hooked on the book. Right? Yeah. Because when you see Jesus, things begin to happen. So... When I look at this, and I'm going to ask four people to come and stand with me to represent the Old Testament. So do I have four volunteers? Here they come, here they come, here they come. Okay, good. So if you, two on this side, two on this side. If you look at the Old Testament and see it broken down, it doesn't just look so big and impossible. Amen? So if we look at the Old Testament, we see the Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible. And I take a picture of who Jesus is in every book. So Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. So I have a picture there of the seed of the woman. Exodus, you know, we see the Passover lamb. So we see him. And plus, I give you an explanation of the whole book that is in, not long, but enough to really be a crisp understanding of that book and who Jesus is in the book. Then Leviticus. Who likes to read Leviticus? Oh, dear Lord. 
you know, I, I read through the Bible twice a year. I always dread Leviticus. I think, oh, why did you put this book in here? But I have gotten hooked on Leviticus because Hebrews shows the priesthood of Jesus. So Leviticus is really about his priesthood. So look at someone and say, honey, you didn't know that. This is really good for you. <laughs> and so you begin to see who Jesus is in these books and how all of it flows together. So let's just look at the four parts of the Old Testament. If we look, we have the Pentateuch. Everybody say Pentateuch. And what do we have next? We have history. Everybody say history. And then what do we have next? And everybody likes this. Wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. And then we have prophets, and not everybody likes the prophets. But the prophets are very profitable. So a lot of Christians do not get the prophet they need to get from the prophets. Amen? You say, well, I don't know who they go with. So in here, I have a chart that shows what prophets went with what king. And you begin to see how they influence that king. So if I read Isaiah, is it profitable to me? Oh, yeah. What about Jeremiah and Ezekiel? Oh, my goodness. Ezekiel, something else, because he's always showing you all of these images. You know, God said, go lay on your side for how many days for the sins of the nation. And then finally he gets up, you know, and that was for the southern kingdom. He gets up and now God says, okay, lay on the other side for the other kingdom. So, you know, you think, goodness sake, he gave a visual. And prophets often use visuals. So we begin to see how profitable the prophets are. So look at someone and say, honey, you need to read the prophets this year. They're very profitable. Now, you say, well, but there are major and minor prophets. Yes, there are, but that doesn't mean minor in importance. It means less words. So you say, well, what is Nahum all about? Oh, Nahum is a really an exciting prophet. What about Obadiah? It's just one chapter, but one of the key history chapters of the Bible that has to do with the Muslim world today. You say, I didn't know that. That's why you need the syllabus, because you need to know this. Is that right? And you'll see Jesus in every one of these. So I'm dividing this up this morning like into four segments. So we have the Pentateuch. So would you say Pentateuch? Pentateuch. Okay. We have history. History. And then we have wisdom. <laughs> oh, everybody likes the wisdom books. What are they? Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Did you know Song of Solomon is an opera? It was written to be sung. And these are things you're going to see and hear that will really, really enhance Jesus to you. And then we have the prophets. So everyone say this with me. Pentateuch, history, wisdom, prophets. Now clap for them and they can be seated. So I feel like if you get a visual, see, you can remember it better. And this is very important. This is the word of God that we're looking at. So, you know, I think when you see Ruth, that's one of the sweetest books in the Bible. But also out of that book is Jesus, right? Because this child they had would produce the Messiah. So how important is Ruth? You say it's important. And so we begin to see people stories. And that's very important helpful to me. Judges, did you know Judges has five charismatic people in it? You say, oh, I don't even like it. You need to read it because you need to know what these anointings are. So there are different anointings. You know, don't compare people with people because their anointing is different. Their calling is different, right? And so we begin to see people and their callings, and it helps us to understand ours. Why do I have a burden for this? Why is this? And so on. So I have to share something with you. 
uh, we had a wonderful evangelist who came to our church. And I don't know, our church was probably five or six years old, someplace in there. And he said to me, of all the pastor's wives I know, you're the biggest example of a failure. I thought, thanks for the encouragement. I really needed that today. I said, why do you think I'm a failure? Well, all you do are those silly little home Bible studies. He said, you don't play the piano. You don't play the organ. You're not head of the Women's Missionary Council. Well, that's as boring as it could be. <laughs> so, you know, he said, all you do are those home Bible studies. But see, God put a passion in me to reach the lost and to get them hooked on the book. Everybody say, hooked on the book. So over a cup of coffee and a cookie and a Bible, people began to get saved. And so these women began to get saved, and they said, we don't have anything for our husbands. So then I started a night Bible studies for husbands and wives. Pretty soon I had 22 home Bible studies, and they said, you need to go on the radio. So the process, so look at someone, say, honey, God has a wonderful process for you. And so we begin to see, why do I like certain things? Why is this in my life? So when I was growing up, I wanted to be a foreign ambassador. And I can remember I was born in Texas, lying on the ground and seeing airplanes and thinking, someday I'm going to be on an airplane. I didn't realize how many days, not just someday, years on airplanes. But I would say that. So what is that in you? That's God's hook in you. And we need to watch that hook. So then, you know, I liked foreign languages. So I took Spanish and French and Latin and Greek and Hebrew, and I was all into it. I'm going to be a foreign ambassador. Well, I became one. It wasn't quite the way I thought. But all of that was process. Everybody say process. Why are you here this morning? I think because you're in the process. God is doing something in you today that has to do with your future. And so he's getting you hooked into him, the spirit, but also hooked into the word. And so in this process, you know, I begin as I begin to pray over nations because uh, Frida Lindsay mentored me and she was rough. Ooh. And I never did it well enough. You know, she said, you'll probably never be a success. Thanks a lot. For, but that was part of process. Everybody say process. I said, well, what do you think would help me? This is Christ for the nations. She said, well, you need to memorize all the nations of the world and pray over them every day. So I did. Now I've only been to most of them. What was that? Process. So stand up. Say, God... Being in this service is part of my process. Give me a hunger for your word more than my hunger for natural food. In Jesus' name, amen. So we begin to get, you can be seated. We begin to get into that process. Now, little did I dream when I started praying for those nations, I would be going to them. But process, everybody say process. So Wally and I really liked Daisy and Teal Osborne, and so we sowed in their ministry. It was a big seed for us. We had a little church. We sowed $1,000, which we, were, we had saved to buy a car because our car was so bad. And so Wally, we go to their meeting, and Wally gives the $1,000. I thought, this is terrible. This is the seed for our car. And then I tried to be spiritual and not say anything, so we got home, went to sleep, and I thought, I'm going to wake him up. He needs to worry. So I said, wake up and worry. You should never have sown that $1,000. Everybody say process. You know, you say, you're the woman of great faith. Process. And so he said, you know, God is going to meet us. So we're driving this old car, and then finally we had to borrow a car to drive to church because we have no money. Well, I gave it all away. And John Osteen came to our church, Joel's father, and he is, gets up to speak. We don't know him. He said to my husband, I see the letter C-A-R over your head. Do you need a car? My husband says, well, kind of, kind of. 
I mean, we're desperate. <laughs> he received an offering for a car. So everybody say process. Don't despise the process. That is really important. Then I had an opportunity. I was going to ORU because I was on radio there and I had some invitations to speak there. And uh, I wanted to meet the Osbournes. I thought, you know, we sowed a thousand dollars in your ministry. So I wanted to meet them and I asked them if I could take them to lunch. So I go to this restaurant and Daisy said to me, I walk, she doesn't know me from Joe Schmo. I walk in and she said, Marilyn, you're gonna be a world evangelist and you're going to go to leaders of nations. And this is what I thought, Daisy and crazy rhyme. <laughs> I have children. Everybody say process. And the very things she prophesied are what I do. And recently, I read some of their books of the nations they had gone to, and they're the ones God is putting me in. So look at someone and say, honey, you're in the process. Hang in. Read the word. Pray in the spirit. Amen. So we get in this wonderful, wonderful process. But. Not everybody is going to encourage you in the process, especially your relatives. <laughs> now, my husband was very encouraging. I don't, that, and my mother was. But my relatives just said, oh, dear, she speaks in tongues. She's crazy as a loon. But then when I got on television, they liked me. So, you know, things change. Everybody say process. Things change. So you just... Hold in. Now they say, oh, Marilyn Hickey, hey, she's my cousin. I think, am I? No, I'm, I'm just being ugly. So all of the process things are so important. So we're, getting, we're walking in what God has for us in the process. So I want to talk to you about the process of miracles, and I want to pray for you for a miracle. So when I started to travel... I was, who was inviting me? Nobody. So I got an invitation to an Assembly of God church in Burlington, New Jersey. So the pastor, and I'm so thrilled, he's invited me to speak. I don't even speak in our church. I have Sunday school, but I don't speak in church. Not that my husband wouldn't, it just women didn't speak then, you know. But I found out God really doesn't care about your gender, but he really cares about what he has for you in the process. Everybody say process. So I said to him, because I'm really afraid, this is one of my first invitations, how long do you want me to speak? He said, as long as you're anointed. And when you're not, I want you to sit down. And if you don't, I'll tell you. Oh, brother. <laughs> that just about wiped me out. So I get up to speak. And, you know, it was like a gymnasium. And there was a man seated in the back in a wheelchair. But you could only see him from here up. So I'm really anointed. So I said, in Jesus' name, get up and walk. He doesn't do it. Oh, I really anointed. I got really loud. In Jesus' name, get up and walk. And he doesn't do it. And the assistant, one of the assistant pastors was standing beside him. He said, Marilyn, he doesn't have any legs. <laughs> this is my first healing miracle. You say, it's not a miracle. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because the Lord said to me, if you will stay in faith, there'll come a day when people come out of wheelchairs. And I have had a lot of people come out of wheelchairs, not in just other countries, but here. So stand up. You say, this is exercise. It'll help your lunch, too. <laughs> say, Father, Father help, me help me to expect miracles, to expect miracles in, the in the process. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. So as we're going through the word, we see the processes of God. And nobody starts up here. All of us start at a certain place. We start to read the Bible. So when I first got hooked on the book, I was 11 years old. And we lived in Sewickley, Pennsylvania, a little town. And I wanted to go where God was. So I said, Lord, what church are you in? Are you in the Methodist church? Are you in the Catholic church? Are you in the Baptist church? What church are you in? 
And this is what started me. He said, I'm in the Word. So hold your phone up. Hold your Bible up. Say, God, God is, in is in the Word. And so I began to read the Bible. Our church didn't teach the Bible, but I began to read it. I began to underline it. I even began to memorize and then, when I was 16, I went to a Methodist youth camp with a Baptist minister spoke. I got born again. So you have the author in your heart. So stand up. Say, I have the author inside, and he can reveal truth to me. I'm in the process. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. So here, I have Jesus inside. And that was so wonderful to me. But, you know, the church that we went to was a very liberal Methodist church. But I'm reading the Bible. Then my father had a mental breakdown and uh, had to be put in a mental hospital. And they said, he will never come out. He'll never come out. It's so bad, so long. And my mother went to one of these crazy Pentecostal churches and got spirit-filled. And so I'm in, at a university, and I come home, and there are tracks by the living room table in the bathroom. My brother said, what do you hit there? She's got all kinds of scripture. Up. And she had gotten spirit-filled. And so she's going to a Pentecostal church. Oh, brother. So she wants me to go with her. So I go with her, and the, there's a woman speaking. Everybody knows women don't speak in church. And here's this woman preaching, and I think, sit down. And then the woman comes down, and she walks in the aisle, and she comes to my aisle, and she said, Sister, do you have too much of Jesus? I thought, I'm not your sister. <laughs> process. Everybody say process. You know, if you had seen me in those days, you would have said, I don't think you're ever going to be used much for anything for God. Everybody say process. Don't despise the process and stay in the word. And let, even though you read some things and you think, I don't understand that at all, but this is a living book. And you're constantly getting new things. So keep your eyes open for the Holy Spirit. So then my father, you know, he was so bad and he got healed. And my mother would go to these crazy meetings with. Oh, my goodness, Oral Roberts, William Branham, wild people. And so she took a handkerchief, and William Branham was there, and she just extended it while he was preaching and took it and pinned it on my father's pajamas, and he came out. Totally healed. Process. Everybody say process. Now, see, all of this affects you if you let it. So... You know, I got saved, spirit-filled, turned on to God, became a pastor's wife. And when I was about 36, I just felt like I was having a mental breakdown. I was really tired. I'd overextended myself. And I'm walking down the steps of our, into our basement, and I said, oh, I'm just like my father. I'm going to have a mental breakdown. And the Lord said, that's right. You're just like your father. I'm your father. I never had a mental breakdown, and you never will either. Hey! So stand up. I want to pray for the mind of Christ for you. And I claim this every day. So put your hand on your head. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Jesus is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. So I began to see how the word would work. And my husband began to have me preach some in our church. I began to have some invitations. Everybody say process. But how did I get hooked on nations? Well, Frida Lindsay had me memorizing them. Because she said, you need to memorize the nations and pray over them every day. Well, Africa is terrible. You know, they have like 31 countries in Africa. It's easy to pray over Europe, 
especially Central and South America. But those are hard. So I did it because she's mentoring me, and I'm praying over them every day, and that's how I begin to go. Everybody say, process. So I want you to see your life, God has a plan for. And it's a supernatural plan. You're not natural. You're supernatural. Isn't that right? You're born again. So you're supernatural. So when you go through the Bible and begin to see how supernatural you are. Now, I don't know if you do what I do. I mark up a Bible. And people say, well, it's holy. Honey, the paper isn't. It's the words that are holy. So, you know, and this is not the Bible I'm reading at home right now, but this Bible is my preaching Bible. It's so marked up, it's pitiful. It has tears on it. It has mud in it, probably cupcakes, you know. <laughs> and so you need a Bible that you really use. And, of course, we have phones in a lot of different ways, but I love this Bible. I always preach out of this one because it has so many tears in it and you know it's a lot of smudges in it but a lot of places where I've put stars on it God spoke to me in that timing amen so you know I began I really wanted to see people saved but I found out that if you have healing meetings everybody comes so I began to have a heart, praying over nations, for Africa and for Ethiopia. This would have been a long time ago. It was in 83. Ethiopia was under communism. Ethiopia, you know, had killed Haile Selassie, who was a good leader, and communism had taken over. And invariably, God will ask you to do something you're so uncomfortable with. So I see it on the news that Ethiopia is under communism, that they're starving, it's just so bad. And the Lord said, I want you to go to Ethiopia. Everybody say process. So this was part of my process. So I thought, well, how do you get to Ethiopia? So I, I called the Minister of Affairs. I did everything to try and get a visa. And they said, no, 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 no you can't have a visa. But this is a big thing I want you to get this morning. God thinks you can do anything. Put your hand on your heart. Say, God thinks I can do anything. I'm in the process. So I couldn't get a visa. And there was a woman in our church who was Ethiopian. And so I went to her. I said, Ruth, I'm trying to get a visa. I can't get it. I have bought all these Bibles in Amharic to take there. I bought all this food. Well, food I could give out here. But Amharic Bibles, only Ethiopians, you know, read those. She said, well, who are you calling? Who is the Minister of Affairs? Well, I couldn't say the name correctly. So I had it down there. And so she called, and she talks to him in Amharic. He's in Washington, D.C. Laughs, talks, laughs. She said, you'll have your visa tomorrow. I said, how did you get it? She said, he's my old boyfriend. If old boyfriends aren't in the process. <laughs> Amen. So things come along. They look so impossible. But you're in the process. Everybody say the process. So I went to Ethiopia. I've gone to Ethiopia a lot. I love Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is in your Bible over 60 times. And in your airports, you have a lot of Ethiopian people. We do in America, in uh, Denver. So there's a lot of that. But in Ethiopia, I began to want to have healing meetings. And so because I began to see that when you demonstrate the power of God, you really attract people of all kinds. So I began to have healing meetings. And uh, I wanted to go to Eritrea. Now, you think that's a gourmet food. That's a country in Africa next to Ethiopia. So I had six days, and Sarah didn't have children then, so she went with me. And so I said to the leader, you know, uh, I want to pray for the sick. He said, well, we don't do that here. 
you know, he said, uh, we just have salvation. I said, well, why wouldn't you want me to pray for the sick? He said, because that offends people, and I don't want you to do that. So this is what I thought. Sit down. Shut up. I'm paying for this, and I'm going to pray for the sick. Sweet spirit. Wonderful spirit. Everybody say process. So if you think you have to be perfect, don't just forget it. You're not going to be. So... The Lord said to me, cool down. Because I wanted to say to this man, I'm here six nights. You're telling me I can't pray for the sick. I'm paying for the meeting. So he said, you can only, you know, you can only have salvation calls. So the Lord really dealt with me to cool down. Everybody say, cool down. So the first night I'm preaching, and God said, stop. Everybody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Le learning to hear his voice. And I've missed it. So have you. But we don't give up. We're in the process. Everybody say, in the process. So I said, you know, there's someone here, and your hand is frozen closed. Would you stand up? God is healing you. And this tall African man comes running up on the platform and we have this on video. He goes like this, and the place went bananas. And in Africa, when they go bananas, they go, la, la, la. Can you do that? I'm not going to take you with me if you don't do better than that. <laughs> and so I don't know what's going on. So the man who has told me, don't pray for the sick, you know, I said, what's going on? He said, that man is our number one war hero. He was shot in the wrist. His hand was frozen closed. You need to pray for the sick every night. Everybody say, process. And so when you see things that don't look good, you get criticized over it, don't jump out of the boat. And keeping in the word helps you stay in the process. Because sometimes it can look so discouraging, it'll never happen, never going to be. Stay on the word. Because faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. And if you see that every book in the Bible is about Jesus, and if you can behold him, you're going to go from glory to glory. glory. So when I tell you these things, it was process. Everybody say process. And like trying to get the man out of a wheelchair who had no legs. But what God said to me is, if you won't give up, there'll come a day when people come out of wheelchairs. And that happened. You say, well, that's overseas. No, it first happened here in the States, in Minnesota. And it happened with a pastor who was not slap happy with me. He didn't want me to have an altar call. I mean, he, he was really on my case. You know, and I just thought, I don't have to come here and take all this. So he said, because he was real tight about time, he said, now, I want you to have altar calls for salvation, but you've got to do it in this amount of time. So when I had the altar call for salvation, this church seats 6,000 people. It took people time to come out of the uh, balcony. And so he said to me, well, you went over. I said, well, uh, these people are coming out of the balcony. He said, well, you should have figured on that. Slap him. Everybody say, process. Do you think this is all good for me? I think it's wonderful. I didn't then. So then that night, I had a healing service, and a woman who had been in a wheelchair for 15 years walked, and we put her on television. Everybody say, process. Now, I want to pray for you that you won't give up. So stand up. Put your hand on your heart. And pray with me. Say, Father, Father help, me help me not to give up when I make a mistake or I look stupid or people think I'm stupid. Help me to stay in the process. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you can be seated. Process and healing miracles. So, you know, I'm... Traveling overseas, I'm in Indonesia, a Muslim country, and I'm in a big church that has like a 1,000 people 
that are their cell leaders, and they want me to teach people to heal the sick. So I'm going to teach you because everybody needs to heal the sick. Does it say believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover? So look at your hands. Say there's healing and miracles in my hands. I need to stay in the process. <laughs> so anyway, that night that woman came out of that wheelchair that really, really encouraged me. But the pastor, you know, he still was ugly with me. Everybody say, yuck, twice. <laughs> yuck, yuck. But now he's one of my best friends. And when I go there, he still starts this, now don't sell your material and don't do long altar calls. And I just think, shut up. You know I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and we're good friends. So everybody say, process. Now what if it didn't work? What about the man who didn't have legs that I tried to get up? But see, later, I stayed in faith. Everybody say, stay in faith. So if you have a hearing problem this morning, I want you to stand up. I have great faith for hearing problems. So I'm going to tell you about what happened in this place. So a woman came up. I'm training cell leaders to pray for the sick. And she told how God had healed and opened her ear. So it's about a 1,000 cell leaders. And so she had people stand up. And she prayed for people like we're going to do because you're in the process, right? Okay. So are you supposed to heal the sick? Yes. So I am. Say, in my hands are healing and miracles. So, you know, she had people stand up. And then, you know, at the end, we always say, now, check yourself. Can you hear better? Did your ear open? Did the ringing stop? So she said, check yourself, see if you're better. And a man came running from up in the balcony to the front. And he said, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Muslim. And I hear these filthy voices all the time. And he said, on the way here, I called my brother and said, I can't take it anymore. These filthy vo voices bother me all the time. And something said to me, go into this building. Now, they're not allowed to put a cross on a building. So he didn't know it was a church. He went in, sat down up there, and when she prayed, the ring stopped. And he got born again. Everybody say process. <laughs> Healing. You say, well, it's my age. Really? Is Jesus ageless? Can he give you energy and open your ears? Yes, he can. So all the rest of you, you have healing and miracles in your hands. Is that right? Yes. You think I'm going to do all the praying? I'm not going to do that. So everyone, turn around and look for somebody that you could pray for. Here's someone up in the balcony who's standing. So extend your hand and pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word into this ear that heals it, delivers it. I speak to this ear. I say, be open in Jesus' name. I say, ringing, stop, and never come back in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, those of you who stood for healing, check yourself. Look for your miracle. We're in a process this morning. Don't sit down. You stood up for healing, right? Okay. Check yourself. Did the ring stop? Can you hear better? Is there a popping going on? So if you can tell any kind of a difference, wave at me. Wave at me, okay? Here's someone, here's someone. Okay, now just keep standing. Some of you who waved, would you come up here real quickly? And one of you would come help me. Come up quickly and tell us the difference. Is there a difference in what you have had before she prayed and after? Um, yeah, I've, uh, I've had hearing loss all my life in this year from a young age, so it rings from occasion to occasion, and uh, the ringing's actually been worse the last couple of days. I haven't even told my wife. Um, so it feels a lot better right now, and it actually feels a little warm right now. It's like some heat in there. 
Um, it's really, it's been all my life, so it's just, I'm so used to it, so it just feels really different right now. So. Amen. Who did that? Yeah. Who prayed for him? Say, we did. So is there healing in your hands? Do we need to have Benny Hinn here? No. Do we have Jesus here? Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Um, well, I've just had like trouble understanding. So I hear, I hear things, but if I'm not really trying to pay attention, I don't understand it. Even my own kids, my own wife, they'll talk to me and I'm like, what, what? You'll be in the same room and she'll have to repeat it so I can get clarity. So I can hear, but it's like the understanding. And in fact, last night I was, we were having one of those moments where she calls it selective hearing, where I couldn't understand what she was saying. And she kept on and I was like, look, I don't know what's going on. I don't know when this started to happen, but I'm sorry. I just can't hear good. So she made me stand up. And um, <laughs> anyhow, uh, <laughs> everything's a lot clearer. It's weird because it's like, it's hard to understand. I don't have like a ringing. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I have like a weird like itching feeling and you want to use a Q-tip and wiggle your ear and do all kinds of weird things, but it doesn't go away. But it, the main thing is like all the background noise is gone because there's always background noise. And so uh, it's just a clear. So. There must be faith in this place. <laughs> Amen? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I've been so going for years with not being able to understand what people say to me. I kind of try and read lips, and sometimes after the third time of asking them to repeat themselves, I just pretend I hear what they're saying. <laughs> and sometimes that's kind of got me into trouble. But um, right now, it seems to be louder and clearer. I'm not hearing as much ringing in my ears. It's like diminishing. And so he's not finished yet. There's still a little bit of ringing, but it's going to go. Process. Hi. So um, I got in a car accident like in 2016, late 2016. I was T-boned, so like this side got hit, and this side was... The, this side was affected, but I heard like this. My ear was under the water, and it took it took a while. And we prayed and prayed, and now I I don't hear like like under the water noise sound. Thank you. Thank the Lord. Okay, we have one more. I've had a ringing in my ears for a long time, probably from working in canneries and stuff. And noise just very nerve wracking. And this year, I, don't, I have no more ringing. This one's very light now. And I'm believing God's going to take it completely away. Because I am tired of being nervous over not being able to hear what people are saying to me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, now, why are you sitting down? Did I tell you you could sit down? Now, listen to me. A lot of people miss their miracle because they don't stay in the process. So I had a twisted spine. I couldn't sleep well. I got two or three in the morning. I'd get out of bed, get on the floor, you know. And I would really be in pain. And I was teaching a Bible study on healing. And I would come in like this. We're studying healing today. Because usually I couldn't stand up straight until 11 or 12 or so. And so my husband and I began to believe for my back to be healed. And every morning, and this was 11 months, maybe, maybe less, I would thank God I was healed Amen. and stand up bent over. And one morning I got up and stood up, and now they tell me I have a great spine. So I think a lot of times we give up too soon. We didn't get the quickie, but we're in the process. So everyone extend your hand toward these people. Say, Father. I'm speaking miracles into these ears, into this body, from the top of their head to the tip of their toes. In Jesus' name, be whole. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Healing, the wonderful bread of the children. 
So I think health is better than healing. What do you think? So as my days, so shall my strength be. I am more active at 87 and a half than I was at 27 and a half. So people say, well, you know, you're getting older. Really? Well, Jehovah Rapha was given to Moses, and he was quite old. And his natural force was not abated, nor his eye dimmed. So you can settle for your age, or you can settle for his miracle. Amen? And sometimes you have to fight. You have to stay in faith and feed your faith. And that's why I want you to get this seeing Jesus in every book of the Bible. Because you need to be hooked on the whole book. Now, <clears throat> we buy books. I love books, and I write a lot of books. But this is the best thing I have. I don't have anything any better than this. Because this is a resource material. You're going to see Jesus in every book of the Bible. But you're also going to see about him in each book. You'll learn things here you've never had. And so I think this is the best thing out of 150 books I've ever produced because it gets you hooked on the whole book. Amen. Gets you hooked on who Jesus really is. It'll give you fresh revelation of him. So if I were you, I would buy two or three because you give people gifts. You know, candy makes them fat. Not good. Flowers wilt. But if you give them the word of God, you'll transform their lives. And so you need to be sure you get one for yourself, but get one for others. And I have it in Spanish, too. Amen? How many of you speak Spanish? Well, you need to buy two. So that'll be good. So, Patsy, can you help me here? Now, I have a Bible here like mine, seeing Jesus in every book of the Bible, okay? And so we have that available to you also. You say, you really think I ought to get in the Bible. I don't think it. I know it. And then these are some special things, and this is really Sarah's idea. And she said, Mom, we have nothing for children when she had her children. And she said, there's scriptures you confessed over me, when I was in your womb that I have confessed over my children, she said, let's do a children's comfort blanket and let's put those scriptures on it and put them in pink and blue. So we've prayed over these that the child whose body touches this will fulfill what God has for them. So we have them pink and blue and they're like a $50 seed. But this is the big thing. Now, folks, the world needs Jesus. But how to get into it is very key. And if your heart is passionate to see people saved, I'm telling you, God will find a way for you to do it. So I have a card that has the sinner's prayer on it. And I say, you know, this is the prayer that changed my life. So it's real easy to give on airplanes. They can't get out anyway. So I got them. <laughs> and, but I think any opportunity and healing is a big thing. So we put the scriptures on who Jesus is on this, and we prayed over these that there would be unusual healing and miracles from the person whose body touched this. And this is like a $150 seat. Well, what does that go for? That helps me with the big meetings because soon we're leaving for Egypt. You know, We'll have some big meetings in Australia. Uh, we'll probably do some. We're looking at Rome for next year. We've done some great meetings in Rome before. So we don't just go to Muslim countries. We go to the world. So this really helps us, this seed, with that. Okay. So bow your head. Okay, thank you. So bow your head. You say, how did you get so crazy? I got really crazy at 16 when I got born again. Now I get crazier every day. Have you invited Jesus into your heart? Are you living what you would like to live with him in your heart? 
Would you like to just make this the best day of your life and recommit your heart? How many of you would raise your hand and say, I'm not sure I'm right with God? Put your hand up really high because I'd like to pray for you. And I see that. That is absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Okay? Let's all pray. Then no one feels alone, right? Because this church will love you to pieces. They'll take care of you. So they're going to pray with you. So everyone pray with me. Say, Father, Father I, thank you I thank you that you sent Jesus, you sent Jesus to die for my sins. For my sins. I, repent I repent of all my sins. All my sins. I invite you, Jesus, Jesus, to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me because whoever calls on the name of the Lord and believes Jesus died for their sins and arose from the dead is saved. I am saved. I believe it. I receive it. And I receive a supernatural life. I'm in the process. Watch out, devil. You lost big time. Amen. Now, this is something that's free. Do you like free things? I really like free things. This is my speak the word. This is what I do every morning with coffee. Now, I'm an early bird, so my mind is the best early. So I get up and speak promises and drink coffee because it sets my day in faith. Amen? It starts my process. And this is free. Everybody say free. free. And all you have to do is sign a card. Is that cool? Yeah. So stand up. Say, I believe, I believe. I'm, getting the, I'm getting the biggest turnaround I've ever had in my life. So turn around and look at me. Say, I believe, I believe. the word of God. The power of the Holy Spirit brings turnaround in every circumstance. I feel led to pray for your finances for the year. So I wanted a million dollar gift because we were doing such big things. Never had a million dollar gift. But I started believing for it and thanking God for it. I don't know, it probably took five or six years that I thank God I'm going to have a million dollar gift. And I did. <laughs> and it's so funny, it came from Africa. You don't think that. You think, oh, it'll come from some rich banker in America. But it came from an African. So put your hands up. Say, I tithe. I sow. So I'm expecting this year to be a big financial year. In Jesus' name, amen. Now join hands. We're going to speak in tongues for a few moments before the pastor comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor, I feel the Spirit gave me something for everyone here. Psalm 512, you're surrounded with favor. And that will be your shield this year for the Maracay. Come on, how many just feel so full? Isn't that amazing? Hey, listen, we're gonna we're gonna end the service uh, this morning uh, with with a song. Again, don't forget tonight, five o'clock we have prophetic ministry. Six p.m. is uh, Sarah Bowling will be here. Hey, listen, uh, Super Bowl. We already know who's gonna win. We don't we already don't we don't like any of the teams. Doesn't matter. Come be, be here tonight. It's gonna be amazing. 
Uh, but we're going to end with a song tonight, uh, this morning. And our prayer team is coming. If you need prayer for anything, you need prayer for healing, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit, whatever you need. Our team is anointed. They're here to pray for you this morning. If you pray that prayer earlier, um, to ask Christ to come into your life, to get things right with God, as soon as we dismiss this morning, there's a banner in the very back uh, of, the, of the downtown. Of the, I'm sorry. I'm all confused this morning. On the bottom level, it says, I raised my hand. On your way out this morning when we're dismissed, just go by there and just tell the person there, I raised my hand. And we have a packet. We have some things to give you this morning, okay? Come on, are you ready to worship? Come on, let's end our time this morning with a song to the Lord.